continuing on learning about the Jewish way to heal. It seems, again, inconceivable that whenever we talk about therapy, healing, and trauma, and all the power in our generation, that this is not addressed by the Torah, that these experiences were never experienced before. They were all experienced before. As like Shlomo Ameler says, there's nothing new under the sun. However, they take different form. And yes, there are certain things that perhaps were never experienced the way they do today with um, uh, what we have with internet, social, social media, um, porn, all the, all the things that were not accessed in the same way. However, the result and the consequences of those sicknesses or mental health, mental illnesses are connected to that. They were always prone with all those same things. And this is why we understand that really healing, um, especially if it's mental health, um, should be addressed ideally by someone knowledgeable in the Torah ways how to heal, which is mostly a rabbi who is qualified in, or who is an expert in working on midos, on character trait. Um, like we have mentioned before. Obviously, this is not to take away the need for therapists today and the need for doctors today um, because we don't have enough rabbis qualified to deal with that. We have a lot of lamdim, we have a lot of you know people who can learn Gemara and teach Gemara, but not everybody understands the human being the way they should, no matter how religious they are. Um, and they're not trained in Midos. And because of that, they lack the qualification to help people who are sick, uh, who need therapy. So in this, therefore, we would need a therapist. However, the danger of just a therapist is that the therapist might be dealing with things that um, are against the Torah, or might be providing tools in a way that doesn't go according to Torah. So it's a fine line. And um, that's why I, the ideal would be that every therapist for a Jew should be a Jewish therapist um, who has knowledge of Torah Lacha and knowledge of um the mental health, you know, biology and um, all the things that are associated with with mental illness, not just mental, but just any illness. Um, so we we need to build a generation, a new generation. We need to build an army of rabbi therapists, so to speak, the real rabbis. The way the Rambam say, like I mentioned in the first video, is that. What is a rabbi, the definition of a rabbi according to the Rambam? A rofe nefesh, a healer of the soul. We understand that our body is sick only because our soul is sick. Those are midos that transform us in a certain way. So I want to bring today a source that I think is very interesting. Um, then his name is Philo of Alexandria. You can research him. He was one of the head philosopher and um, I mean, he's not called a rabbi, but uh, he had a whole commentary, uh, which is today available actually, um, on on the Torah, and he wrote many things. In his from forty C.E. at the times of um, the Roman Empire and in Greece and all that, and. Um, so he says something very fascinating. He writes a lot about character traits and therapy. And he says like that, that I'm translating from, from the French here because I have the translation in French from the author. Um, he says in a general way, 
the people who do therapy, um, therapists, <laughs> um, they try to eliminate. They say, I mean, we're speaking of 40 CE. I speak about therapy. Okay, so that, that's like 2,000 years ago. So he he said that therapists are really mostly trying to eliminate the ego, or uh, yeah, the ego or the yeah. Um, knowing that the ego is the beginning of illusion and the lack of ego is the beginning of truth and those two attitudes are like two sources meaning from the illusions come all the different type of illness and sicknesses and from truth comes all the good things that human, human beings are supposed to experience and and divinity and the goodness and the and the holy so or spirituality you could say so here we have something very you know the the, the it's saying the ego that creates arrogance and um it, because our ego, like the chametz on Pesach, inflates, it makes something look bigger, it makes something look different. We get stuck in stories that we create because our lack of humility and we look at things differently um, and we create literally il illusions and, um, and inflates, so to speak, our our judgment of of things so here it's very interesting he said that we we can heal most of our sicknesses by learning to truly be truly be humble by being humble by being authentic by knowing who i am the good and the negative accepting it embracing it validating it and working on on that so if we want to truly truly be healed one of the main 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 root is connected to Reichheim Vital who says that the, the ego caste and gaiva right is the biggest destructive yetzara that we have in Shara Kedusha so we see that we should if anybody has any mental illness we should work on humility or any trauma in general it should work. It, should, it, it will help get there. Um, on top of that, um, I will bring sources another time, but we, we know that the part of the human being is associated when, when we are in pain in a certain part of, in our body, it, that part, the, the name of that part of the body and whatever its purpose is and its um, function in the body is a hint to what needs to be healed. And therefore, one it should need do a research about it. Um, in, in interpretation. Oh, so, 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 so Philo of Alexandria says that we need, we, the, the, a, a rabbi or a therapist is an interpreter, just like we interpret a dream. We need to interpret what is um, this limb represent, what are we interpreting about this sickness, these symptoms, right? And the therapists are very good at that. That's, that's, that's the job, try to see that certain external things represent a trauma from the past. I was just one point there because I found, I found it interesting is that the only difference between medication and meditation is the T and the T and the C. Meditation, medication. Um, and I think that the fact that it's so, so similar, where we're very well understand that meditation is in itself um, a hint of the greatest medication we can have. Um, and it can lead it's 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 it's, it's parallel to medication. Anyway, that's just my my two cents uh, interpretation of it. Um, 
and I want and 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 I and I want to just point out that we see that our forefathers, the Avos, the Torah is filled with stories of people who had trauma. Yaakov Avinu who was depressed for twenty two years, and at the end said Shema, where he saw he 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 the Shechina came back to him. He was happy again. He saw the big picture. He was able to say this all from God. So he was depressed because he lost touch with the fact that everything is from God, even what appears to be a loss. <sighs> to feel that there's nothing, nothing is lost, lost completely. He had a sense of failure that he didn't protect Yosef. He didn't, he was not able to fix the world through his son Yosef and he thought he had lost it. So there was a sense of, like we said, the ego that I felt. Um, and same thing, David Amelech, who was rejected, right? He was rejected, you know, David Amelech had trauma. But David Amelech was journaling every day and he was saying Talim every day. This journal he's telling was the journal. So he was singing and journaling every day. And he probably had most of the trauma. He was rejected by his parents. He had stigma for being a mamzer, like really bad trauma. But we see that he was completely in touch with himself, authentic. We can take Adam and Chava who got, had shame, guilt, and were hiding and were scared. According to some opinion, the Nachash, you know, raped Chava. So she was, had trauma from all that. And it caused a separation between Adam and Eve for 330 years. So we're talking about trauma and pain. And all this is addressed in the Torah. That through repentance, through love of oneself, through being authentic, through not seeing that God has abandoned us, through see, having hope through the Shema and probably the most important, it says whenever someone is sick, uh, sorry, whenever sometimes the Yetzirah comes to attack you, meaning your negative trait comes to attack you, you start feeling not good about yourself and you feel temptation of that, you have to drag the Yetzirah into the best Midrash. Which is means you 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 le your learning of Torah is what's going to heal you is what's going to protect you. You will have clarity again. You will be humble again. You will realize the big picture. This is what our rabbis, our healers, our doctors teach us. Our and and I want to add one more example from the Gemara. And I think this helps deal with addiction. There's something in the 12 steps that I was doubting for a while, but the Gemara in Gemara Sanhedrin 75a gives really exactly that tool that the 12 step gives. Or it gives uh, specifically about addiction. Uh, um, fo I'm focusing on sexual addiction. I'm not saying it's the tr true for the rest, but it might be very true. That's up for debate still. And the story is like that. That Rabbi Yehuda said in the name of Rav, an incident in which a certain man, there was an incident in which a certain man set his eyes upon a certain woman and his heart became obsessed with her and he felt dangerously ill. And they came and asked doctors. Rofim. So we see we had doctors already, Jewish doctors. And the doctors replied, there is no remedy for him unless she cohabits with him. Um, but then came the Chachamim. So I say, okay, you know, let, 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 so how do I address something that the doctor said? Concerning this case, the sages ruled, it is better that he should die and let her not cohabit with him. Okay, 
so what was so, so, so then these two alternative uh, suggestions that were offered but each one was rejected so what what did the doctor propose let her stand before him naked perhaps that alone will appease him the Chachami ruled it is better that he should die and let her not stand before him naked then they say let her converse with him from behind a barrier perhaps that will appease him the sages rule it is better that he should die and let her not converse with him from behind a barrier it's focused on her because we want to protect the uh, uh, women but in the same time as much as they want to protect him it's saying that that even it, it, he's not going to be healed by that. I think the rabbi is knew better than the doctor because they understood the Yetzara uh, desire for that. So, w w w w how, how we... Um, so, how do the rabbis conclude the thing? As one more thing, because they, they advised that if the woman was not married, let him get married also. But they say, no, even if she was not married, it wouldn't work. And they say, they answered, his mind... His obsession, his taiva, would not have been settled by marriage. As the statement of Rabbi Yitzchak indicates, for Rabbi Yitzchak said, from the day that the holy temple was destroyed, the enjoyment of intimacy was taken from married people and given to sinners who engage in illicit relations. As it is sta stated, stone waters are sweet, bread and, of, and bread of secrecy is pleasant, from Shlomo, from, from Mishle. So, as they say, the Akarashi explained, marriage would not have satisfied his desire, and he would have remained dangerously ill. So here we see how you know, in the 12th step, you are one is not allowed to um, have any, even when one, a man is a is, is sexual addict, a sexual addict is not allowed when, even after he gets married, he's not allowed to play around with women, meaning not playing around, saying, even doing anything that might be okay, but not proper um, and I mean obviously it, it makes sense that this should not even be entertained that the men will just speak to someone just to flirt like for fun but even that should not be done because even someone who has a strong sexual passion and desire will fall if he just has um in simple conversation with a woman, um, even if he's married. So, so it shows that the one of the twelve steps of addiction is that it's you cannot even taste a little bit of it. You cannot even allow yourself to have a drop of that desire come into your life. So those are a few examples of things that I wanted to share that makes us understand how everything is in the Torah. Like my Rebbe always says, everything is in the Torah and how to be a, a therapist and how to be a rabbi and how to be a doctor and how to be, it's all there. We just have to learn how to deal with it from a Torah perspective, which we're trying to learn in our generation. But we have to be then careful of a dangerous gap between the physical and the spiritual. Meaning between the secular world and the and the world of the holy world the world of the torah may we all 
be healed through our Torah.